Uh, I'm Stefan Frodan. I'm here with uh, Kide. We are both uh, maintainers of Flux. We both work at Freeworks. Uh, and today we are going to talk about um, Flux the project, how is it composed of, how we uh, develop it. And we are going to talk about the uh, new direction of where we are taking Flux to, and that is OCI and container uh, registries with OCI artifacts and so on. So we'll get that started. So first an overview of the Flux project. So Flux is split into multiple controllers. Um, we have this architecture where you can pick and choose Flux components based on what you want to do. For example, if you want to uh, deploy Helm releases, you'll need Helm controller. If you want to do uh, image automation, you need to deploy the image automation controller. If you want to do, for example, progressive delivery and shift traffic from one site to another and have a, um, a better way, a safer way of deploying uh, user-facing apps, you'll, um, you could use Flagger and so on. So Flux is not one thing. It's made out of many controllers. And we have a architecture in place where others can extend Flux without modifying its source code. So if you want Flux, if you want to add a new functionality to Flux, if you want Flux to do something else, uh, you can use our Go SDK, build a controller according to our documentation and specification, and that's how you can extend Flux. So Flux is kind of different from other solutions where you have this concept of plugins or uh, you, add, you change something in how, uh, how the main execution happens. In Flux, we don't do that. We, uh, all these controllers are very specialized. We don't touch the disk. We work only in memory, and we, uh, we build them with uh, a security-first concept. And that's why you can't just you know, put a bash script somewhere or write some Python script or whatever and extend Flux like that. Um, we also have a Terraform provider for those that are, uh, for example, provisioning clusters with Terraform. After you create your cluster, you can also set up Flux in a GitOps way using our uh, Terraform provider. And of course, we have the Flux CLI, which can do anything. You can, you can use it to install Flux, bootstrap Flux, uh, monitor it, debug it, and so on. So next, I want to share with you some ecosystem news from, for the Flux project. We are very happy to welcome GitLab and Orange to our uh, uh, ecosystem. Uh, GitLab joins Azure, AWS, and others who are offering Flux to their end users. So currently Flux is in beta in, uh, in GitLab, in all the GitLab editions, and we are uh, working closely with the GitLab team to add great feature to Flux and have uh, offer a great experience inside GitLab for um, doing GitOps uh, that way. Um, Orange and Deutsche Telekom and other uh, mobile carriers, they are relying on Flux to uh, do 5G uh, deployments. And there are, uh, last week there was a nice talk by the Orange team, and you can find uh, a lot of information on the internet what Deutsche Telekom does with Flux. They have their own uh, solution which is built on top of it. Um, around integration and extensions. Um, for a very long time, people said, oh, we find Flux hard because we don't have a web UI. We can't see things. We can't click buttons, right? Uh, the Flux project still does not have a web UI. We are not offering you buttons. But uh, WeWorks uh, has an open source edition called Weave GitOps. It's basically a Flux Helm release. You can add that to your cluster, and you get a, a full feature web UI for Flux. Uh, you can see all things Flux in there, monitor Flux, debug it, and so on. And also, uh, one of our colleagues at WeWorks has been working for over a year now um, with others, too, uh, for making Terraform controller. So ter what's the idea behind Terraform controller is that you can use Flux and the GitOps principles and everything that Flux does to uh, manage resources outside of Kubernetes. And AWS, today they launched a CloudFormation controller, which follows the same pattern as Terraform controller, but of course is specialized for AWS cloud resources. 
So basically, you deploy Flux on EKS, you add the CloudFormation controller for Flux, you put your CloudFormation in Git, and things happen. Okay, back to our uh, initial uh, discussion about Open Container Initiative. So if you are not aware, there is uh, this uh, governance structure under Linux Foundation called OCI, and the people there are doing a great job by defining specifications and standards for how, how an uh, OCI artifact looks like, how can you distribute it, what runtimes are supported to run uh, container images and so on. And I think you've, you've heard this idea before. We've been talking about it for a couple of years now where container registries are moving towards uh, universal storage. It's not only about container images. Uh, the OCI artifact specification allows you to store other things beside the actual container. And in our case, what we are doing with Flux, we are storing there your app configuration. Um, what's important to note here is that uh, OCI artifacts are today supported on all container registries out there. Everybody supports them. Um, major package managers have moved to OCI as, as their uh, default storage. Helm version 3, for example, they did it, uh, this uh, switch, and we also support it in Flux, uh, and recently Homebrew. And I encourage, if you are building today a package manager, instead of building your own distribution system, please look, look into OCI, and you'll find there a great community, great solution, great SDKs. It's all built in. You can use OCI to distribute Whatever you want to distribute, it doesn't have to be a container image. It can be other types of binaries, it can be configuration, it can be whatever. Uh, documentation, you name it, right? It's a, um, it's a great way to unify uh, package, package management and artifact distribution. Okay, so let's, let's explain a little bit what Flux does today and how the GitOps workflow uh, looks like. There is this thing called desire state, right? You want to uh, describe how your clusters, how your fleets are looking, what apps should be deployed there, what policy, and so on. And um, how this works with Flux, you either install, install Flux on each cluster in your fleet, or you install Flux on a management cluster, and you point that Fluxster instance to one or more Git repos where the desire state is which is great, this is GitOps, but there is a little thing here. There is also a container wow. registry. You have to have a container registry to even run Kubernetes. So the desired state is not in Git. It's in Git and in the container registry, right? In Git, you have the Kubernetes deployment. Inside the Kubernetes deployment, you have a reference to a container URL and that container gets pulled from the registry. So in order to have uh, the whole desired state defined, you need two types of storages. One is Git, and one is the container registry. So what we have been doing with Flux in the last year or so, we are trying to offer this model. So GitOps is okay, we, we are doing Flux GA, Git will be supported forever, but this is the, uh, the new, a way of thinking about desired state and where, where we want to uh, offer to people that are you know, open to do such a thing. What we, are, what we are thinking of is let's have the container registry hold the whole desired state. Configuration, signatures, S-bombs, and containers. All of those can be stored in the same place, signed in the same way by the same identities, so it's, in a way, easier to manage. You have a single storage. If you are an organization that runs on-prem, you definitely have container registries sorted out. If you run on a cloud, you, you probably are using a cloud container registry. So it's there, you can take advantage of it and unify all things under it. And the major change here is that now you have to use Flux in your CI pipelines and you have to use Flux, the controllers on your clusters. Because Flux no longer goes back to Git, 
when you do something, you modify something in Git, you have to use the flux CLI that has the same command as Docker, it's called push, and you push the configuration, whatever is there, a customize overlays, Terraform scripts, you name it. You, those things that Flux understand, you can push them to the container registry under uh, as an OCI artifact. And how can you do that today with Flux? Um, so Flux has a bunch of APIs under the source controller where you tell Flux, you, you define the sources that Flux should look at. And the most popular thing, what everybody is doing right now, they are using, they are defining a Git repository, right? Which has a URL. It can be an HTTPS URL. It can be a SSH URL. You give it a secret. Maybe it's a token. Maybe it's an SSH key, and so on. Uh, if you want to verify the authenticity of what you are applying on a cluster, for example, you want to protect your production cluster and you want to say only these people with these keys are authorized to make changes, with Git today and Flux, you'll be using OpenPGP. So everybody has to sign the commit. And in the, on the server side, Flux on the server side has uh, the public keys uh, of the people allowed to do that. So this is Git. Now, we are offering an interchangeable API, which is called OCI repository, where instead of you know, defining the source as a, as a Git repo, you define the source as a container repository, right? And instead of following a Git tag or a Git branch, you can tell Flux to follow now a con uh, OCI artifact tag, right? And you can use Samver, you can use Digest, you have plenty of options here. The same way you can pin, for example, the Git repo to a particular SHA of a commit in the same way in the OCI repository you can pin um, the artifact to a particular OCI digest. So it, it's a mirror of what you could have done with Git repository today, the same things you can do with the OCI repository. The major changes here are in terms of verification of the integrity of, of the artifact. If with Git you are forced into open PGP and you have to use that for signing, which most organizations don't are not into open PGP, it's quite hard to adopt. For OCI repository, you choose to integrate with cosign. And basically you can use also you can sign artifacts with cosign private keys, but you can also use cosign keyless. And as you can see, there aren't many changes, you can quickly switch between them. And now I'm going to uh, ask Hide to walk us through various uh, API options and how we can use OCI repositories in Flux uh, to do things on cluster. So, well, foremost, you might probably want to install Kubernetes configurations to your clusters. Uh, the Flux CLI now has a push artifact command which basically takes a path, pulls, pushes that into a compressed tarball and then makes it an OCI image, uh, which you can then sign and refer to. Uh, the provider here is generic and you can see that there is actually no secret reference, so it means that it's pulled from a public source. Um, it's then used by the customization like how a Git repository would also be used um, and applied to the cluster. <coughs> The same can be done for Terraform modules. Uh, Stefan mentioned it earlier before. There is a Terraform controller. The Terraform controller can consume it in the same way um, and basically roll out your whole configuration. Then, if you want to push changes from your CI safely, Flux can react to the pushes. So on the left, you see a um, um, GitHub workflow action, which pushes the artifact uh, based on a pod and it adds uh, source and revision information. This then receives a note, or the, the receiver sees the event of creating the, um, uh, the package in GitHub, and then, um, sorry, and then triggers a reconciliation of the OCI repository, which in turn creates a new artifact, and that artifact is then seen. Wait a second. So I want to say, go back. Here, I want to say that like, this is the way you do push-based GitOps scene with Flux, right? 
it still pull that, but it's instant. Once you push the architect to GitHub Container Registry, the GitHub Container Registry, registry notifies Flux, and Flux pulls the changes immediately. So even if there is no such thing as push-based GitOps in Flux, you can get the same speed by setting up a receiver and configuring, I don't know, GitHub, GitLab, Jenkins, whatever, to call that receiver and tell Flux, hey, the artifact is there now, go and fetch it. Yeah, and then if the notification controller happens to be down and not see the event, it will eventually be picked up because of the interval that's still being set. Um, so I mentioned this before, when we pushed the artifact, we created kind of a revision um, reference and also a source reference. These things are pushed into the image and you can then see from what commit, for example, the, the OCI image you created was uh, originates from. And this can also be used to, it's, I think it's used in Flux Trace? Yes. Yeah, so Flux Trace looks for that information and displays it so that if you are dealing with an OCI repository and you want to see where the change actually happened, you can still see the reference to the Git repository and go change it there. One, one, one thing here, when you switch from Git to OCI, you may feel like you are losing, you know, the assurances of Git. How do you know where are you at? Because if you look at the uh, OCI digest or an OCI tag, it doesn't tell you much. So we make you add these annotations. When you do a flux push, you have to give flux the source and the revision of the source. And then we reflect this information inside the cluster. And when you do flux trace some particular pod, what flux, the CLI does, goes from the pod to the replica set, to the deployment, finds the deployment, and then it tells you, hey, this deployment comes from this particular OCI artifact, but this OCI artifact is created from this Git repo at this SHA. So you don't lose the traceability you had when you used only Git. Um, there is also support for Helm charts. This is different from an OCI repository because a Helm chart has a concept of its own of packaging. So um, you don't deal with an open OCI repository object. You deal with a Helm repository object, which is actually kind of static in that it doesn't do anything by itself except for providing the configuration for credentials, for example. Then if a Helm chart object is created for a Helm release, it will look up that information do the whole Helm logic of, of looking what the latest version is against, I don't know, a Semfer reference, so one point something in this case, and then um, pull the latest thing, which is different than the whole flow we talked about before and kind of also makes use of Helm's own APIs. Then the benefits of OCI compared to Git. So you have your image configurations and your signatures and everything in one place. You only have one thing you need to authenticate with. You only have um, one endpoint which has all your stuff. Um, the registries of have often a higher availability. I don't know if any one of you is using GitHub. Yeah, you get the point. <laughs> um, and OCI registries are API based and Git has some APIs like this or remote LS command which you can use to get the latest uh, references, for example, for a tag, but it has no other way of like going through the data that's stored in Git. Um, regional traffic also saves you money. If you have your, uh, some Git host and it's somewhere on the other side of the world, it's probably expensive to pull from it all the time. Then uh, you can have passwordless authentication, which I will get into later, and also keyless integrity verification due to how Cosine works. So contextual authentication towards registries. Um, with Git, you can only have an SHH key or a basic authentic authentication token. Um, with OCI, there are many options. You, have a, you can have a Kubernetes workload identity, which is attached to the controller service account and piggybacks of the, on the, uh, I don't know, AWS role you have set or whatever. You can have an image pool secret attached to a reference service account, so you can have some other role that's specific not to the controller but to your service account you're working with and it will use those credentials or you can have the most classic version of a secret reference with a docker config and it will then use the credentials from there. Then the integrity verification of OCI sources. For Git, there is currently only OpenPGP 
and uh, not yet SSH signatures. We're working on it, but it's taking quite some time to get it into GoGit. Um, for OCI, there is the six store uh, project, which has actually two options. You have a keyless version, which pushes things based on some other identity you have, which you uh, see as trusted, or you can have your own private key, which you sign with, and which you then later give to the object that's being reconciled, so that um, it clarifies with that. We are also working with some people to get notation from the CNCF into the project, and I expect that to be probably two months, maybe? Yeah. Something like that. Okay, some scenarios where OCI may be a better fit. Um, we are not saying that today if you are deploying Flux from Git and you are happy with it, you should just drop Git and you know do the whole CI stuff and switch to OCI. This is not what we are saying. What we want, what we are saying is we are offering an alternative, which in some cases it may be a better better alternative than using Git. And for example, Edge is. Is, is a great example, right? Where Git is ki kind of expensive when you do a Git clone, it has a Git history, you have to do checksums for every single file, while if you pull an OCI artifact, which is a tarball with only the YAML manifest inside or only with that code that you really care for, Terraform, Pulumi, whatever it is, that's way more uh, cheap in terms of uh, transfer and also in terms of how much CPU Flux uses on the on your cluster to verify the integrity of, of, of that thing. Um, another thing that OCI opens up for Flux is we we know that no, I mean who likes writing YAML all day here? Okay, right. Uh, there are so many other solutions to not write YAML, to generate YAML, right? For Flux, Flux needs YAML, but you can think about that as the assembler of Flux. You can use many other frameworks out there to generate the YAML and then package that YAML into an OCI artifact. And this is what we try to offer uh, with OCI. Instead of creating a JSONnet controller, in Flux, a Q controller, uh, whatever, other JavaScript controller and so on, uh, you can generate the YAMLs with any language you like, with any SDK you like, and at the end you'll do a Flux push of that result. And that gives you Flux with customization and then you can change namespaces, you can patch stuff even if you want that on the server side using a Flux customization, right? So that's a, that was one of the reasons we started looking at this because we, we can't just add 101 controllers for every single SDK that's out there that can generate some configuration. Um, other things like local development environments. Um, you may not want, I mean, if you are using Git, right? And if you want to test something on your local cluster, you have to push the change to Git. Then your local cluster has to synchronize the change so you can see how Flux will react to it. Will it upgrade the Helm chart? Will it do that? Will it do whatever is happening, right? With OCI, you can run a, a container registry locally in Docker. It's just a container. It's the CNCF distribution. And instead of going through Git and so on, all your local changes, you can push them there. It takes under one millisecond. Uh, and Flux can synchronize locally, so you don't have to go through Git to test things on your local machine. And this is uh, what I will try to show you today if internet here works. <laughs> I've started the cluster creation before the talk, so hopefully by now everything is uh, set up on my machine. Uh, here are some resources. We are going to share this presentation uh, afterwards on the um, KubeCon uh, website. You can download it. But the idea is we have a OCI uh, repository page in our documentation which contains the whole specification, explains what fields are, what you can do with it, how you can configure all the stuff that we are showing you, and also for Helm repository. We also have an OCI cheat sheet where we show you how you can build CI pipelines with Flux push and then reconcile, what we've shown before, but it's like 
really easy, you can copy paste and, and get started with it. And two experimental projects, what I'm trying to show you today with Flux Local Dev, where you spin up Flux with OCI and an experimental distribution that I wrote in Qlang for Flux, uh, where Flux updates itself. So you, you customize Flux, you make your own Flux with Qlang, you generate the YAML, that YAML gets pushed to GitHub Container Registry, and from there, all your clusters are synchronized from uh, that artifact without Git. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> okay, uh, going to try the demo. So, let me show you real fast what will happen here. So, I have a repo, it has a bunch of make files and bash scripts and everything, uh, but in the end you run a single command that uh, creates a Kubernetes kind cluster, creates a Docker registry using the CNCF distribution, the open source one, and it sets up some controllers so you can do something with the cluster, like exposing your demo apps, having monitoring, uh, it also comes with the Flux UI and so on. Um, going to try to run the command and see See if it will uh, really work. The command is called make up. So what this command does, it looks at the files in my repo. It packages some directories, like my apps, it packages all the YAMLs in there into an app OCI artifact that contains my app definition. The uh, cluster add-ons like Cert Manager, uh, the Ingress, Prometheus Operator, everything, it's in its own dedicated artifact, so if I want to update only the infrastructure, I'll only push uh, changes to that thing, uh, and so on. And the idea here is that instead of, you know, you can have this monolithical Git repo with everything inside, but then you can you can create layers out of it by deciding which things you push to which OC artifacts. So it's, it's kind of flexible. You can make your own infrastructure layers. For example, one layer will be you have to install first all the controllers. Then, only then you can uh, install, apply custom resources of those controllers, right? Because ah, you should do it the other way around. Kubernetes say, I don't know this custom resource. And only then you can put your applications in the cluster, at cluster bootstrap. And this is what uh, Flux is trying to do here. I'm not sure if it's working. Uh. Looks like everything is running. Well, let's see if I can access locally my um, demo app. No. So what I'll try to do is, I'll try to uninstall Flux and see if internet can pull all the images again. So if we are here, let me explain a little bit about Flux uninstall. Um, so you install Flux, Flux install all the other things in your cluster, right? When you do Flux uninstall, nothing that runs on your cluster is touched. So how we, how we design Flux uninstall, Flux uninstall only removes all the custom resource definitions, all the controllers, but everything that you have on your cluster is still there. So I don't know, if you have an issue with upgrading Flux or whatever, you can just wipe the cluster, wipe Flux out of the cluster, <laughs> and the cluster will still be there, right? Uh, yeah. I wanted to demo something else, not uninstall, but... Uh, 
let's see if we are uh, more lucky this time. Hmm. We still have three minutes. Any questions until this thing uh, goes? Yes. OCI ops. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I want to explain why. Um, using OCI as an intermediary, as a unified storage, doesn't mean you are not doing GitOps. And I think Git has a very important role where that's where people collaborate. You are not going to make changes with your team inside an o, uh, in a tar in an OCI uh, artifact. You'll make these changes in pull requests, you'll have your teams uh, review everything in Git, and once you merge that, that trace gets injected into artifact and, and uh, uh, in the cluster. So it's still GitOps, but the, the thing that Flux looks, looks at is no longer Git. That's the single, that's the difference. Uh, for your teams, it doesn't change as much. Uh, it may be for new uh, teams that are adopting GitOps, it may be even easier to move to GitOps because right now what you are having, let's say if you don't do GitOps and you deploy from your CI, you have Docker push, push the image, you take the tag, you do, I don't know, set, replace, in your YAML, then you do a kubectl apply of that YAML. And you know you have that consistency, everything is push-based, and so on. How that workflow changes when you want to adopt Flux through OCI, instead of kubectl apply, you do a Flux push. And it has the same result, right? But instead of CI connecting directly to the cluster, having all the secrets, divulge in the CI uh, runner, so if someone hacks your CI, they can do whatever on the cluster, right? If you are doing kubectl apply from there. But if you are doing flux push, the same, at the same container agency that Docker uh, has pushed the container image, then your cluster no longer has to be exposed outside of your perimeter, it no longer has to be exposed to CI. So uh, I think it, in the future it will simplify the adoption of GitOps because it's you replace one command with another, and another great thing about it is that with, with uh, Git, when Flux has to look at Git, right, you have to manage your SSH keys, you have to generate SSH keys for Flux, each cluster should have its own unique key and so on, and then you have to set up those keys in each repository, and you have to rotate them and so on. So uh, pushing to a container registry through OEDC to authenticate with that, and then Flux on the server also using something like IAM role bindings or workload identity and so on, simplifies the security aspect, and it makes it stronger, in my opinion, because you no longer deal with long-lived keys and SSH. You don't need that's also important. Right. Much yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. repeat it so everybody can hear. So on some organizations are not allowed to reach outside to go to github.com, GitHub. So you are now forced into running a Git server next to your cluster just to do GitOps. But you already have a container registry. So it's more natural to use that instead of running a second Git server just, just for that. Okay, let me see if we got any more luck this time. Um. Okay. So it's finally working. Oh. No, no. Let, let me show, let, let's see if it's actually working. Like this is cluster bootstrap. I, I have deployed my app. Everything comes from the container registry, which is locally installed. 
And now I'm going to change some YAML, and instead of doing a git push, I will do a flux push. So in here, run make sync. Yay! Right, no git, I didn't push to git. This is, this is, uh, this file is locally changed here. And uh, the, whole, the whole idea behind it is uh, we allow you to use untrusted and unsecure registries inside the OCI repository. There is a field where you can set and set flux. This is a local environment. Use a container registry with no authentication, no TLS, no NTLS, no nothing. But please don't use that field outside of your local machine. This is just to speed up all things uh, locally. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah, so the question is, now that you use a flux receiver, but that receiver uh, receives the event of there is a new image pushed to the registry, what happens to Git? Because flux knows how to write back to Git, the Git status, and every time you do a commit, it will, you'll have there a green check, yes, I have synchronized this commit, or no, I haven't, and it failed, and why it failed? So today, if you switch to OCI repository, you lose this facility of having commit status updates. But because we have added the metadata as a requirement when you push the artifacts, so the git sha is there, the URL is there, uh, soon we'll have the, you'll have the possibility to also update back in git because we know the sha. So we know that this artifact contains that commit SHA, so we can go back in your Git repo and put the green check on the commit and say, this was synchronized, even if it wasn't synchronized from Git, right? OCI is just an indirection. So good point is, is not there yet, but we'll, uh, we, we have the, the tools to do it. Yes? So any thoughts or recommendation? Any thought or recommendation with uh, integrating with Helm, since now we can use probably the same uh, artifact uh, registry to store both the uh, OC artifacts and Elm, and yeah, maybe even embed the Elm charts within the um, OC, uh, the, the artifact that generated by Flux. Yeah, that's a great question. Like, uh, we, there is this idea in, in inside OCI, and I, I think a lot of people are, you know, working towards a proposal on this, how you can merge how you can have a single artifact that defines your container images that are part of your app, and the configuration for that app, the SBOM for everything, the signature for everything, and you have like this one single artifact that represents everything. It can also embed the chart inside. Well, currently the OCI spec has this index specification, but inside the index you can only refer to multi-arch images, and now metadata like SBOM. But if you look at what Docker did in the latest release, those uh, layers are of type unknown. So we are not there yet. We don't have yet a specification for being able to wrap everything in, into an OCI artifact and say, here is my app. Containers, configuration, Helm chart, signature. But hopefully, next QCon will talk about that. <laughs> I'm not sure if it'll happen that fast, but yeah, it, it's it's on the horizon. <laughs> Let's see. We're done. Thank you very much, everyone.